Hello everybody and welcome to Euro Channel. Thank you for your comments on my videos. I noticed that some of you propose testosterone injections for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and as alternative to PD-5 inhibitors. It is not that easy, I'm afraid. Therefore, what is the role of testosterone when it comes to erections? If you're new to my channel, my name is Stefan Buntrock, I'm a urologist and sexologist. This means I am dealing with testosterone in multiple dimensions on a daily basis. Multiple dimensions means that human sexuality has biological, psychological and sociological traits. And so does testosterone. It governs male gender characteristics, maintains tissue integrity of the male genitalia among others, acts upon general mood and sexual desire and is also involved in social interaction. It would be too simplistic to say that more testosterone equals more aggression and that's it. Research shows that it is much more complex than that. Four mechanisms have been identified where testosterone might unfold its potential. Threat vigilance, reward processing, fear reduction and stress resilience. Likewise, erectile function is very complex and threatened by a number of variables including the aging process, diseases, medication, stress, mood, partner, you name it. Testosterone is an important variable in this equation, but testosterone is not everything. Did you know that it is possible to have erections without any testosterone in your body? Yes, that's right. According to historical reports, women in ancient Rome had sex with potent eunuchs in order to avoid pregnancy. So is there any relationship between erectile function and circulating testosterone levels? Yes, but I think this is the perfect example of how medical science works and why it is difficult to translate scientific results from the lab or animals onto humans. From lab work it becomes clear that erectile function of the penis is directly and indirectly controlled by testosterone. It controls stem cells to form cavernous tissue, thus the structures which are necessary for erectile function. It has been shown in numerous animal studies that testosterone acts on both endothelial and neuronal nitric oxide synthase. This means a major influence over nitric oxide formation. And you know from some of my other videos that there is no erection without nitric oxide. Additionally, testosterone unfolds its action in some centers in the brain and acts upon nerves in the spinal cord. Overall, this is complicated stuff. In fact, it is so complicated that the interactions and pathways involved are far from understood. Now, if we took that little piece of knowledge and said, look, we know that much about testosterone from research. If you have problems with ED, do some injections and you'll be fine. That probably wouldn't work. Studies in men on circulating testosterone levels and erectile function don't show that clear-cut association. This is a perfect example of what works in theory can't be automatically translated into real life. So apart from a different genetic composition in animals, what's the problem? In animal studies, it is fairly easy to come to results because it is possible to control the settings. All animals get the same food, are from the same breed, have the same weight, are healthy and so on. Men come in different ages and sizes with diverging lifestyles, medical conditions and medication. This has to be taken into consideration in clinical studies. And as you can imagine, it is difficult to find a sufficient number of men willing to participate in a study who additionally fulfill the criteria and who don't quit halfway. And even if you'll be able to find these men and include them into your study, there is still the problem with the research question and study design. Are you asking the right question? And is this study design suitable to answer it? And then there are other factors which might play a role that you maybe don't know about that spoil your results. So in the end, you maybe forgot to calculate for testosterone, failed to measure testosterone correctly, had some participants on medication they didn't tell you about, got abandoned by half of the study group, and here you are with your weak data. At least many of the early studies suffered from issues like that. Then the EMAS study some years ago was able to shed some light onto the controversy.
It showed a significant association between overall sexual function and, most importantly, was able to define a threshold value of 8 nanomoles per liter. Above that threshold, the positive association was no longer existent, meaning that sexual function didn't get better with any further increase in testosterone. Below 8 nanomoles per liter, sexual function is increasingly lost the lower you go. But there is also individual variation. In terms of dose response, it seems that the body can get by with very low testosterone levels in some men. Additionally, free testosterone showed to be correlated to erectile function and masturbation frequency. This is important as sexual hormone binding globulin, SHBG levels, increase with age with a negative effect on free testosterone. Back to the question at hand, will testosterone supplementation solve the problem? In some men, it might. Also in those with sexual dysfunction and subclinical hypogonadism. This means that they still possess testosterone in the low normal range, but they come from high levels initially and high levels of luteinizing hormone signal that for this man production is insufficient. I'm only talking testosterone here. There are so many other parameters with an influence on erectile function. Testosterone might be able to solve the problem in some, but not as a one-size-fits-all solution. I mentioned in the beginning that testosterone acts upon sexual desire, another very important point, because apart from the mechanical ability to get an erection, there has to be a willingness too. Low testosterone often results in low sexual desire and depressive mood states, which inhibit sexual function and erections. Because if you don't feel like having sex, getting an erection will be very difficult. So can you imagine what happens if you combine testosterone with Viagra? This is something I will tell you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>